If you're looking for a quiet, remote family getaway, look no further than the newly renovated Overlook Hotel. With our famous garden maze and beautifully appointed interiors, there's a surprise around every corner. Our staff is hard at work to make you feel welcome. The Overlook Hotel. Come stay with us forever and ever. Wonderful to see you all here. I'm Dawn Hudson, CEO of the Academy Museum of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's my great pleasure to welcome you here tonight and to introduce tonight's talk because it's about my favorite topic, the new Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. And it's now under construction on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. Now, I know that the American film industry was actually born right here in New York, uh, or I should say the tri-state area across the river in New Jersey, but it grew up in New York with respect to the filmmakers who are here tonight. Uh, but then in the 1910s, a handful of pioneering filmmakers migrated west to an obscure place called Hollywood in search of better, yes, <laughs> some Californians, we, in search of better weather, better light, and also eager to put a few thousand miles between them and Mr. Edison's energetic patent attorneys. <laughs> so after more than a century of film production in Southern California, the Academy Museum will open its doors in a city that has been, I'm scared to say this, and remains the world capital of filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> At the Academy, we felt that the prominence of our organization, of our members, of our extraordinary collections, and the crucial importance of Los Angeles give us a special responsibility. And we are fulfilling that responsibility with this new Academy Museum. And now the public will find, I love this audience. God bless you. <laughs> How great, you are ready for this. Thank you. The public will finally have a place to see the work that the Academy does year round beyond the Oscars for decades. So first, let me call to the stage one of the world's outstanding museum professionals. And I don't know anyone who knows as much about art, contemporary art, contemporary artists, the history of film, the history of film in all genres, because thank God he's not a movie snob. He served as a top curator in, at MOCA in Los Angeles, the director of the Museum of Modern Art in Oxford, England. He was, led the Hirshhorn Museum before coming to Los Angeles and please welcome the director of the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, Carrie Brower. And next, I want to introduce a man who is no stranger to this building. He's the one who designed it. He's one of the greatest architects of all time and my personal favorite. From Genoa, Italy, please welcome Renzo Piano. So great. This is so great. We've got nothing but rock stars tonight. Our moderator is a member of the Board of Governors of the Academy. You can imagine how much more fun the board meetings are. Um, ha she's hosted four Academy Awards. She's won an Oscar herself. She's also one of the rare people who has achieved EGOT status, an Emmy, a Grammy, I know, an Oscar, and a Tony, the Grand Slam of awards. All this, and she's a native New Yorker. Please welcome Whoopi Goldberg. 
So welcome everybody. They were very specific in telling us to make sure we picked up our mics and didn't sit on them. So I'm glad to see we listened. So let's talk about this museum, which people have been talking about since really the inception of film. You know, they, because you know everything has a, a museum, but the academy, and I, no one can tell me why. So I wonder if you can tell me why now. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, w not quite since the inception of film, but pretty close to the beginning. Okay, two weeks um, after. <laughs> <laughs> no, in 1929, uh, 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 Douglas Fairbanks, Mary Pickford, who started the Academy, did say uh, that they thought there should be a library devoted to cinema and that there had been enough history of the medium and it was such a great art form that it deserved to have uh, a museum. And so plans should be put into the works for the creation of a museum. Uh, so nine, it's not only 90 years later, we will open the museum right on time for, for <laughs> Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks. Uh, they're no longer with us, but um, uh, we're, we're gonna open it anyway. Now, I don't know why it took so long. Um, you know, Los Angeles started a film museum several times. And every time, not just the academy, but the city too, and right. the county, and every time they would start it, uh, something would happen, you know, it was like, maybe they were too busy making movies to actually have a museum, but I think it usually was something more bizarre than that. Like, at one point in 1964, I think it was, they actually broke ground on a museum, the county did, I don't know if you know this, Renzo, but, um, uh, and, and one guy wouldn't sell his house, so uh, they had to pull out and uh, it became a political uh, thing. So th something always happened, and but now, finally, I think we've done it. Wow. We're close. Well, you think they would have given the guy a part. <laughs> That's actually a good point. Uh, well, it was yeah. the county, though, so. Ah, <laughs> all right. And can you um, tell me, and so is it hard to create this museum in the midst of the, the movie-making capital? Well, it, it's always hard to make a museum. <laughs> uh, no, not really, because we have there a building that is a piece of history in Los Angeles. When we started that job, you know, I was told this building, the May Company, right. on the corner between Wilshire Boulevard and Fairfax, is a piece of history. It was built in '39. I said, well, I was made in 37, so <laughs> I'm more historical than that. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it, we started very well. I mean, I can understand. I can, and it's always good when you have something to grab on. You right. know, it's not true that total freedom is better. So I was, we were quite pleased, actually, to right. have that piece there. Except that we can fit um, a movie theater of 1,000 seats in that building. So that's the reason why then we added the building. But right. you know, in some way, it, it, came, it, it came quite, uh, you know, if you look at that section and that drawing there, you understand, you have, a, you have a kind of flirt between the two buildings. One on the right is, uh, is the historical, is a department store. Right. Now become more like a factory for movie, history and all that, and then we have bridges, and uh, we have this uh, movie theater that is a bit like a spaceship ready to take off, you know. And that is, by the way, what cinema is about, right. taking off. So it's, it's not really more difficult than you. You know what, what is more difficult is to accept the word museum for me, because um, a long time ago, in the 70s, when I was a young bad boy, together with another bad boy that was Richard Rogers, we made the Saint Pompidou in Paris. Ah, yes. And that was the moment when we decided that the word museum was almost a bad word, you know, mm -hmm. because we, the idea was that 
and a building for culture should be open, accessible, not right. intimidating. Right. So museums are normally intimidating. So that was the moment when we started this idea that cultural building museums should be open, accessible, non-intimidating, creating the sense of curiosity. But in reality, when you talk about movie and the cinema, you understand that even having something like a museum that is about duration, is about longevity, is about right. time. Right. It's about time, and that is not bad at all. It's time. Maybe in 29, 1920, it was a bit too early, but now is the time. I like that. Right. Well, I noticed that there is a similarity. You like open. You like to make things open. This, when this is not here, you have this space looking towards where the traffic is. And you sort of feel that, that it's, there's big breaths in there. And I noticed the same thing in the, uh, yes. in the drawings for the museum. Why was it important to make it feel like you could breathe in there? Well, you know, movie, in, in making architecture is not that far away from making movie. You know, it's uh, always about sequence. Right. It's a different kind of sequence. In the cinema, you, s you sit and the movie moves. In architecture, you don't sit, you move. Right. And the architecture stands. But the idea here on this building, yeah, actually we are entering the building from north, the side, but you see the sequence of different planes, multiple planes, exactly like you are sitting there, you see through. You see the garden, then you see the lobby, then you see the traffic and the, and, and the bus terminal. And this idea of a sequence is very important. And the entire building here is conceived, not just this picture, but the entire building is conceived like a sequence between light and shadow. Mm -hmm. And we began to, you know, this, and this is, by the way, what cinema does. It's a sequence in time, in architecture, it's a sequence in movement. And, and I think that what, what's uh, amazing about this is what, Renzo just brought up the term museum. Mm -hmm. And we like the term museum because, you know, it, it, it's, it's time for a museum of film. But a museum of film is a very strange kind of hybrid thing. Right. It's about the art, it's about the science, it's about all kinds of things that film art, all the different art forms that come together to, to make a movie. And I think you have to attack it in a different way than a, a regular museum. You have to do it on a multiplicity of levels. The first one, and the most important, is actually a great movie theater. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that movie theater, you need to be able to show 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter, 70, laser projection, and, and we're even equipped in the large theater, the one you see there, of, um, uh, with nitrate. So we can see prints that were actually made in the 30s or, right. or, or 40s. So that's, that's actually the key, and the movie theater is, is like a, a bit of the spaceship, right? You, you climb into it, right. and it takes you elsewhere. It takes right. you to other places, other lands, far away, in the future, in the past. So that's, that's the anchor, and then then you need exhibitions, but an exhibition with film isn't like an exhibition with art. You hang the art on the wall, right. that's kind of like it was meant to be seen, but film wasn't necessarily meant to be walked through in right. that way. As, as Renzo said, it sort, you sort of sit still and it walks around you, uh, but we're going to do exhibitions as well, and that's where we can really learn, go behind the scenes uh, in, in these sort of immersive environments that you know have uh, installa film installations, multiple screens, sound, uh, architectural uh, uh, installations, uh, right. production design, and really learn how films were actually made. So, uh, and then an education center will be there, this amazing terrace, which overlooks the Hollywood Hills, the views of the Hollywood Hills, and all kinds of things that will be in this place. And I think we couldn't understand cinema in its in its full-blown sense without right. all of these things, actually. Well, it, you know, the, it's called the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And so when you go to, at least when, as a kid, when I went to the movie, in a very interesting way, you came in, the first thing you saw outside were 
flashes of what you would see inside, because you had the pictures, and you had the marquees, and then you went in, and then they had some more information about the film, and so you got your anticipation up, so that by the time you got in there and sat down and got your popcorn and jujubes, <laughs> you were, yeah, jujubes, <laughs> you were ready to be taken wherever you were going to go. Now, when I think of movies in, from 1960s and how movies are done now, that's where, for me, all the sciences come in. I don't think people ever call the Academy as it should be called because you can't have one without the other. Innovation continues to happen. Can you talk a little bit about how you're gonna tie that in to the museum? Yeah, actually, the, the main exhibition, which will be on floors, two and three, will, will not be a straightforward history of, of cinema, but it will actually be taken from the point of view of the filmmaker. It's a history of filmmaking. And, and of course, there's a lot of history of film mm -hmm. in that. But um, we're starting back in the 19th century. We sort of take you back in time. Right. You go backwards first. Then you start a march forward, watching the evolution of cinema develop and all the great, wondrous things. It's a little bit like a magician. Mm -hmm. You know, the magician shows his magic, and we want it to be magical in the spaces. We want it to be cinematic, but not so much so that you disappear completely right. into the dream. Right. So you're still part way uh, awake to be able to understand the art and science then right. that came together to create um, uh, you know, the great artworks of the 20th century in, in cinema. So when I went to the site, I was kind of surprised. I took a tour with you, Carrie, last month. Let's, can we talk a little bit about the buildings that are part of the campus, the museum campus, and the inspiration for the design? Don't rush. For rent. <laughs> what, what can I say about that? What can I say? Well, the first thing is that I have to say that the first time I went there, a long time ago, designing the, the county museum, the, LAC, the LACMA building, those buildings, I counted in the street few people by hour, you know, by half an hour, you know. You stay there. Nowadays, you s you have more people walking the street, mm -hmm. and that's the funny new. Los Angeles is becoming a pedestrian city. It's slowly, very slowly, but it is becoming a pedestrian <laughs> city. And uh, and you know the big thing is that they are building they are building a new subway there. Mm, so yes, yes. We'll have a new subway. And the idea to have a campus in the middle of the city, in the middle of the mess, and for me, mess is not that bad, you know, it's a well, kind of, yeah, I know. part of life and all that. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a quite challenging. And by, by the way, you know, I, I was also, I wanted to say something about this idea of a museum, because I said before, for me, museum is something that feel like a, about something consolidated. Mm -hmm. finish. Mm -hmm. But this is what is making this challenge especially complicated because it's, a, it's an art, a cinema, that is um, the only contemporary art together with um, the close friend, the photography of course, mm -hmm. it's the only, but it's in the same time worth a kind of historical um, study today because it's one century. So we have, we have an history. But at the same time, it's art and science. And the science they keep changing. Right. And so it's still moving, still changing. Yeah. So you are making a museum of, of something that still changed. And you know, thanks God, thanks God. New thanks technology. God. What, what happened? <laughs> I, I just will say this now. Perhaps you want to check and make sure your phones are off. <laughs> it happens, I forget too, and I don't know if you should be shooting this. Okay? We good? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, no, I, yeah. I, I, what I, I want trying to say that science means that cinema is a feed that is even contaminated in some way, in the good sense, yeah. by invention, by reality, by new things. 
And this is what is making this adventure so mad, so incredible, because it's about two things that look almost contradictional, history and future invention, but they are not. They're not. So in some way, that's why this building is made of two pieces in some way. It's like a flirt between the old and the new. Right. It's a flirt between a building that is a piece of history itself right. and, the, and, the, and the sphere. And the sphere is, is the spaceship ready to take off. And, and this is, in some way, in some way, it's a museum, but it's also a factory. Yeah. It's also a factory, a laboratory for the future of, of cinema. Love it. And, and, and maybe I should add to that. Uh, that's exactly right. And <clears throat> I should add to it that the uh, exhibitions won't be just about the past. They'll also be about the present and the future. Uh, and we actually have a space uh, carved out in the museum. Renzo helped us find a space in which we could actually cut through uh, the center of the museum. It's right in the heart of the museum, actually, and create a double height space that's 34 feet tall. And that will become uh, a space primarily used uh, for, for lack of a better term, expanded cinema type projects, mm -hmm. multi -screen, multiple screen installations, right. uh, or interactive uh, uh, projects, maybe ones using virtual reality or, or uh, augmented reality. And uh, so we want to push the envelope on that and actually help become kind of a, a platform to commission things right. uh, for the future. So, so we'll, we hope to take cinema into its next phase. And uh, because in a way, you know, they're all worried about cinema, uh, cinema dying. You know, it's been told, we've been told it's dying numerous times, but it's really expanding into all these other areas, you know. It's kind of interesting because when you talk about the history of cinema, you know, there are so many facets to it, and it's fluid. It's ever-changing, it's always going to be. I, I, I hear people talking about, oh, movies are done. No, because the experience that you get, the collective experience that you get in a movie house, watching something on a huge screen is vastly different than when you're watching it at home. You know, you're surrounded by others who are going through the same experience. So now in thinking that way and thinking about really the past, will the museum be able to encompass the, the positive history and the rough history that they also encompass in terms of, you know, rem removing people or not allowing people uh, to participate or painting people up, you know, because there was this idea that you couldn't have real Asian people unless they were in a, a, a second or third dairy part. We were talking about Louise Rayner uh, in The Good Earth, you know, as opposed to Anna Mae Wong. Who, who went up for the part and then didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's stories that we, those are the stories we do want to tell. The, that's just as much a part of the story of, of uh, the studio system mm -hmm. uh, as, as other stories. Right. And we also want to tell the stories about the fact that when the power started to become, um, you know, uh, started to gather together in mass out right. in, in Hollywood, with, with the Douglas Fairbanks, Mary right. Pickford's, Charlie Chaplin's, D.W. Griffiths, the, you know, Cecil B. DeMille's, uh, all of that, um, and the moguls then came to be, there's another story to be told because people were being left out mm -hmm. uh, of that. Uh, as great as, as that was, there were other filmmakers around the country and uh, tiny studios right. scattered all over this country that made films called race films. Yeah. And it was every genre. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was the cowboy movie, yeah. uh, the western. It was it was gangster films. It was adventure films, right. and uh, but they all starred African Americans, and people don't know that history. And that's one actually we're 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 going to be telling uh, uh, at the museum as well. Well, I also wanted to mention, by the way, because we got into this about the idea of sitting with people to watch movies. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is it's it's all come full circle. Uh, because the very beginning of, of the cinema is 
pretty much a beginning of watching things individually, um, looking into the kinetoscope, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the stereoscope, you know, um, and uh, the praxinoscope, you know, where very few people could see it at once, usually right, just one. Right. And so we, we've kind of come all the way back to that now with your iPhone. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it evolves and yet it echoes itself yeah. at the same time. Uh, I, I always I enjoyed to say something opposite to what it was. <laughs> it, it's, but no, I, I just, it's not opposite. I just want to add one thing. Watching a movie in a, in a movie theater is about conviviality. Mm. It's about sharing the same enjoyment. It's about staying together. That's the reason why there's something magic in human being to be together and to share the same values. And this is something that will never disappear. You know, it's the same thing with music. We have designed so many concert halls. When you are in the concert hall and you are 1,000 people, 1,500 people listening to the same music, of course you enjoy the music, but you also enjoy being together with other people, right. enjoying the same music. Right. And this is what we call it conviviality. That's urbanity. That's a sense of humanity. It's, it's, it's the essence of humanism. And even and this applies also to the cinema. Of course, everybody can enjoy looking at a movie in, in a little screen. It doesn't matter. It's not about the size of the screen. Mm -hmm. you, you may be very rich and to have an immense screen home, mm -hmm. but you are just yourself. You are not together with other people, enjoying the same thing. You know, all this is, there is one of the reasons why making those buildings, call museum, call whatever, house of cinema, call as you like. But one of the magic things is that you do place where people meet and they stay together. Right. And they share the same values. And this, this is the beginning of something that I call civic, civic, civic yes. pride and yes. civic, civic behavior. I agree. When you talk about uh, the museum, how it will look at past, present, and future, when you're talking about cinema, how will people who are seeing this museum in 40 years still have a flavor for what we're going to see? When, you, when it opens next year? Is it, is it being built so that it can continue to physically evolve as well? Yes, I hope so. You know, it, it's funny, uh, as we've been putting this museum together, um, one of the things that has come up occasionally from, from people is that um, we shouldn't show silent film because no one remembers. What? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I get that from uh, from a lot of people. What what is the reason for showing silent film? Because no one remembers those people. What is the reason for having a von Sternberg movie? Because no one remembers Marlena Dietrich, um, and and it should really be about today. Um, so. You know, my answer is, well, if they're starting to forget, that's all the more reason for the museum, yeah. um, and that we need to preserve that legacy. So I think that we should also have the flexibility that 40 years from now, what we're doing today will become part of that museum uh, as well. Yeah. And, and that's one of, the, one of the things that Renzo and I talked about at, at the very beginning, was having flexible gallery space mm -hmm. so that um, we could change that space in any way that it needed to be changed right. uh, and not be locked into to one system. So, and, and Renzo was, was uh, more than happy to give us that. Right. Yeah. Great. I, I, I think this story of the time, of duration, is very important. What is good about museum? And I start to love museum at this point in time. It's because they are about duration, I said before. And this is very important. It's the duration in the sense, in many sense. First, physically speaking. You don't make a building for 50 years or 100 years. Mm -hmm. You make a building for a few thousand years. Yeah. Well, I'm not joking. I come from a country where it's quite normal to see a building that is 2,000 years old. Yeah. What is wrong about that? So duration is also in that sense, physical duration. Yeah. But the other one is, uh, is the metaphorical duration. I mean, cinema starts to, to deserve 
an attitude where you know it's it's not really just something changing. It's also something that has value that are set up. Yeah. Again, when I'm Italian, so every time I think about the new realism in Italy, for example, after the war, right. that's something that for me is a kind of fundamental piece. But there are so many, so many things. So me, making museum, that's why making museum is not, is not bad. Of course, at one condition, that we understand that it should be not a place intimidating. Yes. should be a place where people can feel easy to come, and also where they discover everything, including the future. Right. And that's why I believe that, I don't know, I will be not there probably, but in one other year, somebody may come there to the same, to the same movie theater. Right. That will probably work in a completely different way. Right. But still, it will fly on the street of Los Angeles. It will be still ready to take off for a journey. Right. I mean, do you think that, that uh, the museum will have space for people to, at some point, when we are able to really hone in on uh, virtual reality, will we be able to walk onto the set of Who's Afraid of, no, not Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but uh, whatever happened to, <laughs> sorry, whatever happened to Baby Jane? you know, or be able to sit and watch an actor uh, prepare for a role that happened, you know, a hundred years prior. Because uh, do you think it's important for people to understand how this actually, how, how this actually works? Because most people I don't think know what goes into, why it takes 500 million people to make a movie. I mean, that, that's, what, that's one of the, uh, the major points of, of doing the museum, is to really show what it takes to get a movie made. And, uh, you know, uh, we've actually discussed how at the beginning it was one person with a camera, mm -hmm. and, and now the credits roll, and it's, as you say, five, 500 people. <laughs> but e each one of those individuals has a real role and a real job uh, to do. And uh, one of the things with the Academy, the Academy is divided up into all these different branches, right? And that, we decided early on that's not how we wanted to do the museum because it kept the branches separate. And right. really when they're on the set and they're really working on a film, everyone's communicating. Everyone's talking. Right. You, you have to talk to one another. And so what we wanted to show was how these branches came together right. to actually uh, uh, work together to, to create a, a film. And so that's one of the reasons we want to take it from that perspective. One of the things the, that we can do, because it's the Academy, uh, probably better than any other film museum could do, um, is that we can actually also have incredible public programs by the actual makers of these films. Right. You know, whether it's... it's someone from Steven Spielberg, you know, or, 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 or Martin Scorsese, down, you know, to say a, a costume designer or the production designer or, or the makeup artist. And people can actually hear from them personally how these films uh, got made. So they'll hear directly from the filmmakers. And that's with the networking system of the Academy, that's one of the things we can really bring to this museum. Or, or really, it's almost like a center or like a hub for people to come, all the film lovers in Los Angeles and all over the nation, right. internationally, um, who, who love cinema, to see it in different ways, right. either on the big, the big silver screen, in an exhibition, right. uh, in, in a public program, um, and to discuss it and be there and communicate with, with one another. So, so Renzo's very right. It's, it's, it'll be an international cinema because it's not just it's American cinema that we're talking about when we go into this museum, is it? Right, no, it's not, and it's not just about Hollywood. It's, it, it is about international cinema, yes. I, I don't know, Wolfie, how cinema will evolve, of course, but one thing is for sure, it will be forever an art to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what is the instrument of telling the story, mm -hmm. but what counts, what matter is the story. Right. It's the emotion that you are able to do. And this, this is something, by the way, in a, in a different way, but it's also architecture. Architecture is also telling stories. When you make a building like this, it's yes. about a story. You move around and all that. So nobody can say, but one thing that will remain forever is the fact that you need a house for those things, a house, right. a place where things 
uh, can be seen yeah. and where you meet other people right. that love the same thing. And this is something that is essential. And, and as you build this, are you, because when you think about all of the sciences that go in, so we're talking about things like sound and lighting, you are in, you know, one of the meccas where some of the best in the business are. Are they going to be able to come in and assist you in making sure the lighting is right for this or making sure that the sound in the room is that or all of the things that go into this? Yes, we, we've been very lucky to, um, <clears throat> been very lucky to have a number of individuals, you know, uh, uh, with the academy, uh, you know, with the governors of the academy outside of the governors too, uh, with people in the industry who've already um, come and actually worked with us to to help us figure out how we might do a certain room. The, uh, sound is a good is a good example of that, and uh, it's very important to hear all those ideas out because there's in incredible. Uh, you know, creativity right. from those individuals. And um, it's a new experience for me, you know, working uh, with them. I mean, the main individual that we're working with is a production designer by the name of Rick Carter, uh, who has, he won an Oscar for Avatar and also for Lincoln. And um, he's a wonderful individual, a, a real sort of uh, uh, philosopher uh, about, about film and, and how things should get put together. And it's been a learning experience for him too because an exhibition is slightly different than production design, right? right? right. So uh, working together, uh, we've been trying to come up with new ways of actually showing film in, in the gallery gallery spaces. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just a bunch of ob objects, although objects will be there. Right. And it's not just a bunch of film clips, but it's a kind of immersive feeling that you'll have uh, as you go through. So yes, uh, we've been working closely with a number of filmmakers and it's been a lot of fun. I want to add something. I, I know that you're very, very um, worried about practical things. I know because I've been watching, of course, of course, including restroom and all those things. But you know, the, and you are right, you are right. A building is a machine, a building mm -hmm. is a machine. And of course, this building will be a machine. Can, Deborah, can I have the picture of the section? Can you show that, the section? No, not that one, the, the spine, the spine, no, the spine. The, the, sh the, the spine. shadows, I the, think. The shadow, the Chinese shadow, I, yeah, well, look at that. This is what you see when you are in the, in the May Company building. This is the, the place of shadow. And you look to, to the sphere, to the movie theater. This is what you see. You, this is the diagram of people moving in, in the building. Right. And that's why I'm talking about machine. Of course, those lift elevator, those escalator, they, they must work. Right. They must work, for sure. But the, the reason why I'm showing this is because they must work, but in the same time, this is what makes architecture quite interesting. It's not just about the things working. It's not just technology, but it's also the fact that this is actually cinema. Because in a normal day, in a normal Saturday afternoon here, you will have 1,000 people moving up and down. And you have people, because everybody in the building will move on that, on that area. Right. So they will take escalator, they will take the stair, they will move up and down with the, the so it's a kind of living diagram. It's actually cinema. It's a cinema. Actually I was saying to Gary, joking that I hope people will sit there watching other people moving around. <laughs> you know, because because th this is the reason why architecture in some way also tells a story. Right. And the building is always a combination of technology and uh, machine. Right things that work, and, 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 and the dream, and the, and, and the, you know, the, the inspiration, I right. mean, and, and beauty in some way, because this is also about beauty. And, and, and the fact that this building is about cinema, and you must feel that it's about cinema, right. it's about movement. I, I, so the, the contrast of light and dark, is important to you with this building, yes? Yeah. Why? That's, that's the first thing we've been discussing with the filmmaker when we started. I remember Steven Spielberg telling me the first time we met, Renzo, it's, everything is about sequence between light and shadow and back again. So 
Yes, it's true. The working on the light is fundamental, and especially in this, because we are looking north and we are looking to the light, and so the people moving will be like a Chinese shadow. Mm -hmm. So you, in, in some way, the light is beyond. The right. People. So it's 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 always working on those. It's not just the light and shadow. It's also compression, expansion. It's also silence and 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 action. It's it's about many many. Right. Things. But this is what the sequence mean. By the way, the sequence is also what matter in uh, music. In music, we have the same thing. Right. We have a sequence, and uh, and architecture is the same thing. <coughs> All right. <Sorry. laughs> so, I, it, <laughs> this is a really long question, Carrie. I know from my recent visit to the museum that you have some amazing objects like the Aries 1B lunar lander, the only remaining model from Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey, animatronics from films like Terminator 2 and American Werewolf in London, and of course, the ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz. And the library has an insanely amazing collection of photographs, production, and costume design, drawing scripts, and posters, including a couple that uh, I brought to y'all. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, because I think it's important. I think it's important. So, but can you tell us a bit uh, more about the collection and what visitors can expect to see? Yeah. Um, <laughs> The answer is yes, we do have all those things. Uh, we, um, we've been, you know, the, the Academy had already a library, uh, you know, that, that was started a long time ago. The library is unbelievably uh, you know, packed full of amazing materials, and it includes, uh, I think it's over 12 million photographs at the moment, and 55,000 screenplays and posters, and and they're annotated screenplays right. too. So if you want to, if you want to see what Fred Zinnemann was thinking when he shot High Noon, you can read it right, right. in in you know his notes, or or Gregory Peck's performance in To Kill a Mockingbird. The notes are right there in right. the screenplay. Uh, great posters and more, thanks to you, and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so, so it's a wonderful collection of works on paper, basically. Uh, then the film archive has an amazing collection of films, 100,000 different uh, uh, titles uh, in, in their collection. Uh, but what the Academy didn't do over the years so much was collect uh, three-dimensional uh, objects. Um, so uh, there were a few things, but not much. So we've been trying to, over the last three or four years, uh, build that collection of props and artifacts and things of this nature, some of the things that uh, you just mentioned. And we've been lucky enough to get a hold of, of Save the, the Ruby Slippers, uh, right. you know, and um, uh, the close-up pair that was used in the close-ups. So, uh, and, and and Kubrick mentioning the Lunar Lander, you never know what this stuff's gonna turn up. It turned up in someone's sh uh, garden shed in, in England. And, and uh, <laughs> Kubrick had all the, the models destroyed because he didn't want them appearing in other films. Right. And uh, particularly sequels to 2001. And, and um, uh, but one of them got away, and uh, we, we did have Douglas Trumbull come look at it, and it, it is the real one. And so we were able to get our hands uh, on that. So we're building a collection. But as I say, you know, the objects are fantastic, and when they're from really well-known films, they have a kind of aura about them. They do become a kind of relic right. in a way, which is rather wonderful. But, you know, um, but I think the, when, one is learning about uh, the cinema, it has to be more than just objects. And I think too many film museums around the world uh, are just crammed with objects and they don't bring uh, those objects back to life. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I think you've got to reintroduce the moving image in a big way in, into the exhibitions and into the museum, right. not just in the, in the theater, which of course it will be there, but, but actually in the gallery spaces uh, themselves. Um, and you have to do that in a very cinematic uh, way. And I actually come out of the art world, so um, uh, even though I've, I've led a very schizophrenic life, you know, doing film exhibitions in the art world. But um, from contemporary artists, actually learned 
how one can be creative with screens, for example, where you can have a series of screens, you know, each with a montage on it. Right. So you have montages against montages uh, in rooms. And you can say things not just in a linear fashion, but in space mm -hmm. as well as you walk through. So it'll be a combination of, of those things as, as you move through the museum. So uh, I'm going to pose this question to the two of you. What possessed you to say yes when they said, do you want to do this? Why did you say yes? What, uh, is it a love of cinema? What, what made you think, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to do this? Uh, for me, it's essential that pedestrian, first, essential to have pedestrian, of course, uh, because we are in it. But the other thing is that to make the ground floor totally porous and totally open, uh, accessible. So the idea that actually, look at it, this is the ground floor. And as you know, this was a department store, uh, a very famous one. Everybody in Los Angeles knows this, the main company. So we didn't demolish the building, that is wow. good, because it's a part of the history, but also it's very, very solid building. And we just made this space that is uh, so generous. It looked like a factory. It looked uh, very totally flexible. And the idea that this floor, that is the first floor, the ground floor, it's totally open. It's free. People come right. from Wilshire Boulevard. They come, but it will be not free when you go up. But you know, on this level, it's free. You have a restaurant. We have activity in like like uh, art or uh, cinema. And we have all those uh, things. And the f everything starts from the idea that the ground floor is a part of the city. It's a, it's a, it's a, the building, in this case, doesn't fly because it cannot fly. But you know, this is one of my constant ideas. I mean, even in, in New York, the, the new Whitney is, is a flying vessel. And, 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 we, have a, and we have a space underneath. Right. Because, it, because this is what you have to do, because you have to give back to the city what you take. The right. city gives you a piece of land, right. and you give back. Right. And you but, give back. So you're sitting at home, nice glass of vino, <laughs> talking to your lovely wife, and the phone rings. And somebody says, would you like to design the new Academy Museum for us here in Los Angeles? Do you say, of course, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> or do you say, prego? <laughs> <laughs> what made you say yes? Well, you know, it's a, it's a funny story. First, you never say yes because you are very busy in doing something else. So <laughs> normally the answer is, oh, wow, I'm not sure. I, I don't know and all that. But then, <laughs> then, <laughs> then you start to think about it. And you know um, what happened that uh, as an architect, sometimes if you are in the right moment, in the right place, you don't change the world for sure. The world doesn't change. It's not changing because of the architect. But the world, the world changes. There are moments when you have a shift in the world. And then as an architect, you are there to build that change, to give an, a built expression to that change. That's what you do. So after saying no first time, then you think better and say, wait a second, but this is this is one of the shift of the of the of the of the, of, of the culture because this is the moment when a a great piece of history in in the cinema become mature enough right. to become you know, to be uh, visible and become a place where you go and all that. So you start to think about that. And this is what happened when you are called to make a public building. Right. Um, you know, even this building where we are is not public, right. but it's part of Times Square, it's part of this. And, it's all, and, and in some way, that's the reason why you can see through and you see the traffic on the 8th Avenue and you see the, 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 the bus uh, terminal. Because, because making public building is a putting in the city places of civic life. Right. And uh, this is the beginning of something that makes a lot of sense because cities are still great invention, but they need those things right. to be better place to live. Right. 
So, you know, every time you sit and uh, somebody asks you something extremely complicated and difficult like this one, because you don't even know how to call it. You right. call museum or you call house or you call, call factory, it doesn't matter. But you, you say yes because it's about making place for people to stay together, to stay together and to, and to, and to mix experience. Yeah. And, uh, and in those buildings then, finally, so a miracle happened. The diversity is no more a problem. Diversity become a value. Right. So you know there's something miraculous happening. Yeah. So every time you understand that this may happen, then you say yes. I, I like it. I like it. I'll ask you the same question. You're sitting around, you know, looking out on the vast horizon behind your house. <laughs> With a glass Never of wine. Never been to my house. <laughs> no, you know. And somebody calls you and says, hey, we really need somebody. Yeah, that to was come. Don Hudson. <laughs> yeah. Why did you say yes? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> what pictures Renzo gave they such a good you? answer, I can't top <laughs> that. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm from Los Angeles. And when I was growing up there, I could never understand why there wasn't a film museum there. Mm. And it was such a great center for the making of, of movies. And I've always loved film, and with one degree in, in art history and one degree in, in film history, right. uh, and exhibitions that I had done, you know, when someone asked you to do a film museum in your hometown uh, that has needed a film museum, I think, right. for decades, um, I, there's no way I could say no to that. And it, it was sort of like a dream job, to be honest with you. So I said yes. And this building comes alive, and people will come and see it, all kinds of folks, people who are interested in, in different aspects of film, whether it's in front of the camera or behind the camera. Will there be uh, residencies where you have a director that's in residence for a week uh, giving master classes. Will you will will it become not just this building, but this not just this living building because we now know that it's 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 cinema and it's moving all over. But inside, will people be able to come and absorb from lots of different? Uh, uh, Groups or purviews, will we be able to do that? Yes, I, you know, I I think that's the most important thing in in a way. And uh, Renzo's designed a building for us, which allows us to do so many different things in it, from education center, you know, to enormous public programs in the thousand uh, seat theater, to more intimate. Uh, screenings in the 288-seat theater, which is um, uh, on the lower level uh, in the old May Company building. By the way, I think we, we failed to mention that the May Company building, which is now known as the Saban building, after a major gift, right. um, is uh, uh, was built in 1939, uh, as you say, two years, but it's a great year for motion pictures, yes. right? So yes. I think it was meant to be all the vectors coming together. Right. So, so uh, I think what the surprise is going to be when you come to the museum that you're going to see cinema in so many different forms, mm -hmm. in so many different ways, and over such a, a long period of, of time. And you know, the, the the history of film is extremely complex, uh, and uh, you know, it's it's only about the same history as modern art, right? It's about the same time period, and and yet it, it almost feels to me like like the the um, history of film is much more uh, layered and complex than, than the history of, of modern art, per se. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to tell that story is, is a challenge, uh, but you have to tell it in all kinds of different ways, from, from temporary shows, permanent shows, spatially designed projects, commissions, public programs with great filmmakers, um, and, and an education center for young people mm -hmm. to give them their first taste of what it's like to be creative right. with the moving image and with sound. Right. And, and from there, hope that they understand that they too right. can move on to be 
filmmakers right. maybe go to UCLA or right. USC or NYU? Or learn hair and makeup. Because and makeup, makeup, you know, the things that happen yeah. uh, in terms of what happens on a movie set, you know, it's hair and makeup and it's wardrobe, you know, it's knowing why something hand sewn by, you know, a, a, a great uh, wardrobe mistress is heaven, why people often take, <laughs> take clothes home. <laughs> Because sometimes they're better made than a lot of what you can buy. But to have people understand that they're, that you need all of these things, you know. And, and to understand like a costume designer might actually make four, five, six different versions yes. of the same outfit. Yes. And you know, the, the great story is like Lawrence of Arabia, right? Where they made numerous versions, yes. uh, you know, of, of, of the white robes. Uh, and as the movie progresses and things get darker, right. the robe actually, they, they wore the fabric and they wore it down and right. actually changed the fabric by the end of it right. so that it didn't look as white and lovely well, as it's it like did Gandhi, at the beginning. You know, Gandhi, he starts out in this suit and, and suddenly in the middle he's in, you know, linen. You know, and you're thinking, okay, that is a big deal to see how it's done, to see how it's done the transition. But so much, so much of uh, uh, the filmmaking, the arts in, in filmmaking are invisible to us as we yes. watch the film, yes. right? And so one of the things you have to do is to bring that, you know, make that invisible yeah. uh, uh, art visible yeah. to people so, th so they understand it better. I, 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 I think I try to answer to this question. What can you bring home? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go there. It, the, this is a constant uh, preoccupation of somebody making a creative work. Doesn't matter. If you are a writer, you write a book. Or if you are a filmmaker, or what, if you are an architect, you make building. What can people bring back home? And I think for me, the answer is that People will bring on something only if there is a poetry there, if there is a beauty. Uh, poetry is not something uh, strange. It's fundamental. It's about, it's the emotional way you can transmit something. Mm -hmm. And then you bring it back on. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is something that is a, it's also maybe coming from the fact that I'm Italian. And you know, and in in my country, but not just in my country, in all the country of Mediterranean, Greece, everywhere, the I concept of beauty beauty is not just uh, cosmetic. It's not cosmetic. It's not frivolous at all. Beauty is a very profound concept. It's very profound. It's a, it's very much about beautiful and good, and good coming together. And this is extremely important that when you go there, and I hope this will happen, it will happen, I'm sure it will happen, people will go to that building or to that place, to that institution, they will emerge, they will swim in those elements. And um, probably they will also be emotion, emotional about uh, the space, I hope, I hope. But they, they, what they bring back is something mysterious and beautiful, that is, uh, is a poetical emotion, mm -hmm. is a poetry. Mm -hmm. I think this is, uh, and, and this is also part of the, of the reason why a museum is, is a special place. It's not just a museum, but though the public, because, because it's about something that remains inside. This is also true for a movie, you, under, you know very well, yourself. Uh, a movie, give something, normally not more than three or four things, you know, that's already right. a lot. That's a, but this is only if beauty, poetry is there, because then it comes inside and remain. Well, it's, let's talk a little bit about beauty and poetry, because when I think of all of the movie houses, the visual of these movie palaces, that they're older than my time, but uh, I've seen all these amazing pictures and pictures of what people who were working in these movie houses, you know, they wore uniforms and there was a whole 
it was a whole piece that sort of happened when you went to the movie theater. As I, I think I was telling you, my mom explained to me that she was dropped off, you know, at nine in the morning, and nobody saw those kids until four o'clock, because they were in the theater. They were watching the, you know, the serial and then the movie. But going into these movie palaces was kind of a big deal. And will we, will people be able to get information on that kind of architecture and why they were built that way or why people talked about building the cinemas that way? Because I don't, we don't see a lot of stunningly beautiful, you know, places where you go in and you think, oh, I'm, uh, this is a palace. I'm sitting in a palace, you know. I'm, I am somebody in this palace. Will we get a feel of the why of that as well? Yes, actually, uh, it, you know, I think that's so important uh, because it's, you know, the, the way the exhibitors, you know, showed these films uh, is, is very much a part of the history as much as the films themselves. And um, actually, on the lower level near where the uh, 288 seat theater is, the 10 man th uh, theater, uh, there's uh, an exhibition space down there in which we're planning uh, to show. Uh, that very thing. We're planning to actually show a lot about exhibitors, mm -hmm. about the movie theaters, about the concession stands, right. about the wonderful way that movies were presented. And it's very interesting to, to you know, pick up where, where what Renzo was saying, because I think, um, you know, the, the movie palace, the way they used to be, you know, in the 20s, the 30s, right. they were telling you then that this this is a great art form mm. that you're you're entering something very special you know whatever the movie was whether it was a comedy or it was some you know, citizen kane it was it, it was something that was, it was very special and that was very much about the 20th century mm -hmm. now the mm -hmm. 21st century but but back then and and they were lending a kind of aura of art to it wow. because it was often rejected as not art right. and still is uh, very often um, but it was, in, in my view, you know, probably the greatest art form of the 20th century, and I think it still is the greatest uh, art form. It's just changing and, and morphing into, uh, into other things. So I think it's really important to see how we watched movies mm -hmm. and how they, it, that changed over the years, from small little storefronts that had them at the very beginning, uh, penny arcades, right. small theaters, and then building the grand movie palaces. You know, because ultimately, it's, this is the poetry, in a way, too, that you're talking about, because the movie theater is really, when you think about it, it's a giant camera. It's, the, it's just the opposite, where, where the camera actually is recording light coming from the outside. Mm -hmm. The movie theater is projecting a cone of white light on the inside, right. and, and, and this other world that appears, this otherworldly light uh, appears on the screen. And you go into a half state of dreaming. You're, you're, you're partially asleep and partially uh, awake. It's, I, a, it's I, a fabulous, and that's a poetic I, moment. I, I have no idea why beauty and dignity is no more an essential part of our lives. I don't know why. It's a sad story. I don't know, but I'm doing my best to get away from there. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a little drop, it's a little drop, but it's fundamental because beauty is, and this kind of beauty, Dignity is also about dignity and civic pride. Right. It's so essential because it's not aesthetic. It's not about frivolity. It's something that is essential in 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 in, in human uh, in human beings. Right. And uh, but you are right. It's sometimes I really wonder why is no more so important because it's 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 beauty, but it's also dignity. Dignity is is the pride, yes. pride to, yes. to be in, to be part of something, and you know, and and by the way, mm, what we are, what we are trying to do, yeah, I, I I I hope we will succeed. I'm pretty sure we will succeed. We are doing plenty of things that are in some way useless here. Yeah. Um, I word, I use the word useless because people believe that sometimes. 
beauty is useless. Yeah. It's not something, but it's important. By example, on the top of this building, can I have the top picture on the terrace? No, no, the one watching out, watching north, watching Hollywood, this one. This is the terrace of the building. It's a totally useless, I can say, because <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the pleasure to come up above the movie theater and then you look to Los Angeles, to the north, so you are not blinded by the mm -hmm. sun, mm -hmm. and, you, and because Los Angeles is a low, low. By the way, on the right here you can see Hollywood because it's there. So, yes. so you realize suddenly that you are not somewhere else, you are there, you are in Los Angeles. But those sort of things are things that you have to do because they remind you that beauty is a constant aspiration of human beings. And we keep uh, forgetting that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what's important about this terrace, too, I think, is you travel through the museum and you get to the top um, and you look out over and you, uh, Los Angeles and Hollywood uh, in, the, in the distance. And, you know, um, this museum is, is not just because of the film industry in Hollywood, it's also right. tied in with the history of Los Angeles right. as well. So it's an important museum for Los Angeles. And you know, I, I don't want to give too much away, but we will have an app that works with right. uh, things. And when you're up on this level, um, you will be able to use the app to look out to Hollywood, which right. you see laid out, spread out in front of you. You never told me that. Uh, <laughs> and you'll, you'll actually travel back in time and you'll go back to the Hollywood of the past right. and see what it was like when the first movie studios nice. were there. And then travel forward as it evolves over time. And not just, not just the movies, but also right. Los Angeles itself. And well, we can keep building on right. that over the years. Well, don't forget, you know, the, that New York, <laughs> we are also here because, you know, a lot of this started in Jersey. So Orange. I think it's probably, it, it's not going to happen in the next couple of years, okay? <laughs> but I think we should put in for an extension so that people recognize that Hollywood, while people think it's in one place, Hollywood is in many places. It, it's Hollywood's sort of this larger concept. It's a concept. Yeah. As it's, was this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank <laughs> you.